Good morning, Necromaniacs. I know it's been a bit since my last post, but I wanted to make sure I got this right for you. I've spent the last five days playing as many games of Necromunded with my friends and family as I could, and I'm trying to get the best grasp of what works and what doesn't for the Enforcers. Now I have so much to talk about that I'm going to have to divide this up into two videos, and I have a feeling this will be a regular occurrence with a lot of the reviews for the gangs. So let's settle in and yak about the Palanite Enforcers. All right, let's classify the Enforcers. They are a shooting gang, they are highly effective from six to 12 inches, and they have the best starting equipment and armor in the game. And then we'll say they have acceptable melee capabilities. Now, they have one special rule that's called Fresh from the Academy. This allows a player to have the option to gain a Juve type patrolman anytime a ganger is deleted because they're dead or retiring from the uh, during step six of the post battle sequence. Unlike a lot of Juves, these Fresh from the Academy Juves come with starting gear and armor, which is really nice. All right, next, let's talk about the stat line. So enforcers don't have the greatest stat line. The weapon skill of the leader is a three plus, but otherwise their stat line is at best that of, uh, I guess if you, if you compare the Kador ganger and an enforcer ganger, they're almost the exact same. So I mean, for those two, they're exactly the same stat line. They have five inch move, four plus, four plus for weapon skill ballistics, three plus toughness, three plus strength. Um, one wound, four initiative, one attack, and then sevens across the board for all your double die rolls. Uh, so it, they don't have the greatest stat line and they make up for this with their equipment. All right, let's call this part Enforcer Armory. Starting off with the basic weapons, you have the Enforcer Bolt Gun. This gun is what makes Enforcers. I love this weapon. This is exactly what you should be getting for every person that you have on a gang, the bolt gun is 50 credits, has a four plus ammo uh, reroll, so that so it's better than the six plus that regular uh, gangers get on other gangs, and it's five points cheaper than the standard. It's usually uh, 55 to 60, depending on who you're getting it with. And this gun is amazing. It's got strength four, two damage, minus one AP. It's got a 24 inch range. That 24 inch is critical, and a 12 inch. Uh, short range, so you get plus one at that 12 inch. That's why I classify these guys at amazing from six to 12 inches is because of the bolt gun. So I, as you grow your gang during a campaign, you want to get as many bolt guns as you can and just pass those things down. I'm going to talk about some other weapons that you're going to want to pick up, but the bolt gun is going to be your staple gun for this gang. Let's use a five star rating to rate all this equipment. And this bolt gun straight out of the gate is gonna get five stars. Next is gonna be an enforcer shotgun. This is uh, has the salvo shot and then the, I believe it's called the scatter shot. The scatter shot is a template and it is, a, it is good <laughs> is what I'll say. And I, on the very last game I played with enforcers, I've been playing a bunch of games just trying to get uh, knowledge of how they function, playing against them, playing with them. And in the very last game against a good friend of mine named Josh, hopefully he's listening, um, he was able to completely shut down uh, my abominant uh, Gene Steeler cult monster who had dual uh, chain swords and I could not get close enough because he had a nine inch template and I had an eight inch charge. So there's no, there was no way, as long as he kept that, I believe we tallied it up to, uh, it was like a 130 point, let's see, it's 60 credits for the gun and 70 credits for the enforcer. So that's gonna be 130 credit enforcer with the shotgun using the template was able to keep my I, th I believe 170 credit abomination or abominant whatever they're called uh oh uh, at bay the whole time the whole game he had him locked down because i couldn't get close enough to charge because the second i came close enough he just walked that shotgun guy over and hit me with a template i tried to use some cover to stay away from him didn't matter uh he would shoot over the scattered terrain and i couldn't get close enough just using the regular uh structure terrain to get a charge off on him so i was completely locked down i didn't have any uh, pistols or anything on the guy all i had was close combat weapons and i couldn't use them because he would pin me every single time with a template so I have a newfound respect for the shotgun and uh, that's how he used it in our very last game and it, it worked great. And that this is great for a four plus BS, uh, uh, I, I keep wanting to say guardsman, uh, enforcer. 
So, and you have four plus on every single character that you, every starting character, the leader, the champion, and the uh, regular gangers. So this is a great weapon for them. Now the problem is the range. This almost has the range of a pistol. It's six inches uh, and then 12 inches for the short and the long of the salvo. The salvo is pretty much, much like the regular shotguns, it's like a mini bolter. Um, but uh, unfortunately this is 10 points, 10 credits more. I would actually rather have the 30 point regular shotgun gun that is literally a to me a, a mini bolter um and then work up once i have the credits to a 50 credit bolt gun um but at the same time the template is super important and that's that's i i i didn't see the use of the template until this ha that last game happened and i have a newfound respect for it so that's uh, that's what i got to say about that we'll, we'll say that has four stars now we're going to skip over the subjugation pattern grenade launcher and go on to the stub gun. We'll come back to the subjugator weapons and do those all at once. Um, so the stub gun, A, it's free. It's five credits if you want to buy another one, which is great. But the main thing is that it's free. Uh, it gives you a two plus to hit if you're inside six inches, which is better than the auto pistol, which has four inches for their short range. And then you, you just should buy the dum-dum rounds. I've decided that across the board... Get the dum dum rounds for a stub gun, and and to me, I'm actually coming around to the stub gun being better than the auto pistol because of the strength four. Because having strength four versus either a toughness four or even better a toughness three opponent, it makes it so much easier to wound. Toughness is a critical stat in all of the Games Workshop games because it it determines how hard it is to wound that character. Um, I love Wraith Guard. I play Eldar a lot. That's why they call me Static Elf. And I love Wraith Guard because they're high toughness characters. So yeah, you may hit them 40 times, but then you probably got to roll fives or sixes most of the time to to get a wound on them. And then I got an armor save like a Space Marine most of the time. So I love high toughness characters, and you should too. And any chance you get to buff up toughness, do it in almost any of the games that, that Games of Workshop produces. That's how I handle that. And I would say the stub gun, because of the free... Because of the dum dum rounds, it's a five star weapon. It's ten credits or just five credits with the dum dum rounds uh, for an amazing weapon that you just got to get close enough. And and every enforcer comes with one. Um, so next is going to be the auto pistol. Again, we just talked about it. I did the math between an auto pistol getting two auto pistols. That's going to be ten credits. Then getting the Manhunter rounds, which bumps them up to strength four. I wish Manhunter rounds were much more available to all the other gangs. We use the Dark Uprising campaign a lot, so we don't use the Trading Post because that's it's not in the in that campaign setting if you use it by the book. Um, so I don't have the Man Stop rounds available to everybody, um, but I really like them, and I wish I had them in some of my other gangs. But in this gang, so you pay ten points. Let's say ten points for the the gun. 10 points for the man stop rounds, do that twice. At that point, you're spending 40 credits for a weapon that you should get about two serious wounds on average when you go off. Uh, let's say you put it on a character and you have a gunfighter. You should get two serious wounds uh, every time you do that. Um, I guess or two rolls, two attempts at a serious wound every time you do that. The same thing with fast shot on a character with a 10 point for spend 10 points more and buy a bolter for 50 points instead of spending 40 for two auto pistols with the manhunter rounds, man stop rounds, and you can get four rolls for serious injury, attempting to get a four, uh, serious injury. So you literally, for 10 credits more, double your chances to get uh, the serious injury rolls. So it's just not worth it, guys. I, I wish it was. I love the auto pistol. It's probably one that the auto gun and the auto pistol are my two favorite guns in the whole game. And uh, but, but I guess the bolt gun is quickly becoming a new favorite because it's just so versatile. It has great range. It's not quite a plasma gun, obviously, but it, it does some work. So moving on. Next, we're going to hit the special weapons. Uh, first is going to be the concussion carbine for 30 credits. Uh, it has a nine uh, inch short range and an 18 inch long range. It has a blast. It's a blast weapon, which is good. So it means it's harder to miss because it, it's going to throw out a template and it does concussion, which is minus two initiative. It has knockback, has seismic, which uh, automatically pins you. I mean, we a lot of my guys, I guess automatic pin is like jump up in Blood Bowl. It means that you just ignore the pinning. You can jump up as a free action and not have a pin, but this automatically pins you. So you don't get, you're, you're not allowed to use your jump up skill to ignore the pinning. Uh, you, 
and so and then on a six plus it ignores armor but again you have to roll a six on the i believe it's to wound and i i don't want to count on rolling that six to get get ignore armor uh I, I don't like any weapon that that ro you need to roll a six to do a thing. You can't count on it. It happens one six of the time, maybe if your dice cooperate and roll average. Um, so I would I would say give this one three stars. It's only strength three. It has minus one AP, but it only has one uh, damage one. There's a lot of better things you could get for your thirty credits. And here's one of them: the sniper rifle, thirty five credits. Uh, it's got a tw twenty four inch short range. But you don't get a bonus for the short range but if you get it in the 48 inch long range it's strength four ap minus one and damage one so i'd love it to have damage two because it's a sniper rifle oh well i'll take the damage four i love damage four all day um you pair this with an infrasight the infrasight allows you to see through smoke and also it allows you to ignore uh partial terrain or do minus one to full full terrain if they're in cover so it either ignores the the light cover and gives you minus one to that uh, uh full cover so they only get a plus one to your roll when they're in full cover so it helps you with cover and it is going to make sure you can see through smoke so it's a great tactic throw a bunch of smoke if they're a shooting army too throw a bunch of smoke and just keep shooting through that smoke every turn and have a smoke guy just chuck a grenade every turn shoot through it and that then they don't they can't shoot back and return fire it has rending, so on a six plus, it does an extra wound. So remember how I was complaining about it doesn't have two wounds? Well, if you roll a six, it does. Again, I don't want to count on that. And it's great when it happens, um, but otherwise, it, you know, oh well. If you get it, you get it. So I would, I would call this a four-star weapon. I definitely outfit. I wouldn't buy this on the outset, you know, as you, as you start your gang. This is a weapon you upgrade to. Um, if anything, probably get your champion a bolter first, and then... When you get a chance to buy the Infrasight and the Sniper Rifle at the same time, buy that and then hand your Bolter off to uh, one of the regular patrolmen. And, you know, now they're now they're boltered up, ready to go. Okay, let's talk melee weapons for regular patrolmen. First, you have the 30 credit uh, Shock Baton. And I feel like maybe Games Workshop, this was like a weird typo because the Shock Baton is regular strength. It has Shock, Damage 1, and it has Parry. And it's 30 credits, but then the Shock Stave, which I'm guessing is a longer stick version of it, has Strength plus one, Damage one, same, uh, a two inch engage range, so it's versatile, and Shock. It doesn't have the parry, but w why would you not get the Shock Stave? I, I don't get it. So I feel like the Shock Stave is so much better, and maybe they m accidentally flip flop those, those credit values, but oh well, it's just five credits difference. Um, and then the, the trick with this is that not only are you outside of their, like they don't count as being engaged. So if they want to attack you, they have to make a charge and you have some amazing skills with the enforcers. So let's just as a scenario, I run up and charge with my shock stave. I hit him. If I don't kill him, okay, no problem. Next turn, he's like, you know what? I'm going to take you out. So he declares a charge. Well, I go, hold on. I have got your six. I have threat response. So I have all these uh, Palanite skills that allow me to do things whenever an enemy declares a charge and or completes a charge. That means multiple, if I have my guys in kind of a clumped up area, they can really put some hurt on them if they all start to activate. And that's what you want to do with those Palanite skills, which we'll go over those. We're still working on weapons, but uh, some of those Palanite skills really get cool. And there's some neat things you can do with that shock stave when you force your opponent to have to charge into combat after you've already engaged him the first time. You know, hopefully you did some damage or something, but when he stands up or if it, you know if you whiff totally, he's still gonna have to charge in. And at that point, all of your skills that activate whenever you uh, someone charges you get to go off. Next, I guess this isn't this is a piece of equipment, not really a close combat weapon, but in in reality, it is a close combat weapon because you do it during combat. So with manacles, you use an attack basic action whenever you uh, are in cl close combat, and the enemy you you don't have to roll to hit; it just automatically happens. The enemy must pass an initiative check, or they get minus two weapon skill, cannot move, they have they cannot make ranged attacks. Uh, then to get away from that, so that's that's the bad things, then to get away with it, they have to do a break bonds, and this is a double action, so they have to waste a whole turn to break out of the, the manacles. Um, and that's a 2d6. Uh, you get minus two for each friend that's uh, within base contact, not one inch away. They have to literally be base to base with you. 
And then if it's equal to or lower than your strength, then they, they break free. But they have to spend a whole turn doing that with two actions. So it's a great weapon. Everyone comes with them now per the uh, the new fact that came out in 2019. And this is, uh, so uh, it's a free weapon. Consider using these all the time. If you want to run up, slap some monocles, uh, manacles on them. If they have a four plus, it's a 50-50 that they're going to fail this. If they have worse than a four plus, say they are a Vansar or even better, they're a brute. An Amba is a brute. I, I believe he's a brute category. So something that has, you know, initiative five, initiative six, these guys are going to fail that uh, initiative test. And then now you've slapped a brute and he has minus two weapon skill. He can't move. He, he can't make ranged attacks. You completely neutered him. So a uh, great tactic to use for these manacles. All right, now we're getting into the equipment section. First is gonna be Dumb Dumb Rounds. We've already talked about them. Uh, five credits, amazing. Uh, to bump your attack, or I'm sorry, your, your strength up of the weapon from a three to a four is huge. Because most of the gangs, if you talk about the starting six, um, are gonna be strength and toughness three. Now, uh, Goliath, there'll be toughness four. Um, that's pretty much it though, of the starting guys. Um, now you'll run into some abominance and stuff like that. That'll be, and then of course, brutes and stuff, but the majority of the gangs you're going to run into are going to be toughness three. So now you're going to wound on threes with that toughness four. That's critical. Um, so I, I always get dumb, dumb rounds if you have uh, stub guns. So next is going to be the bio booster. This is a one use per game. It pretty much gives you the true grit skill, which allows you to either, uh, did, if you're, if the, Players rolling multiple injury dice against you, you do minus one to it. Or if they're only rolling one, then you get to roll two and you get to pick one. It's pretty much like the dice in Blood Bowl. If you have the advantage strength-wise, then they have to roll the dice and you get to pick versus the, them getting to pick. Um, so I give that three stars. Uh, five stars for Dumb Dumb Rounds. I can't remember if I said that. Three stars for the Bio Booster. That's not horrible. It's once per game, but it could save your butt. True Grid is a good skill. Next is the Bio Scanner. This is so uh, specific to one scenario and I, you know, when you're trying to be the, A, you have to be the defender and B, you have to be, you know, using this. So I don't like this because it's super specific. Um, maybe if you were going into a scenario where you knew you were about to need to use them, you might buy one or two for your, for your defender guys who are gonna be roaming around in the dark while they sneak up on you. Um, but otherwise this is going to be a one star item. Don't, don't just pick these up just because next is going to be the infrasight. We already talked about it. It's amazing. Allows you to see through smoke. It does minus one to the cover that uh, enemies have. This is going to be five stars. I love these. Now you can't put it on a rapid fire weapon, but it's a, it's a great thing to stick onto, especially a sniper rifle. I'm trying to think of other weapons, uh, maybe a las gun even. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you could buff up the toughness, I'm sorry, the strength of a las gun, then you also stick something like this on there. Next is going to be, so five stars for that. Uh, next is going to be the penetrator rounds. It's 5% more effective for 20 credits. Th that's not amazing. Penetrator rounds go in the bolt gun and they give you rending. They're unstable. It gives you minus two AP, which is good, especially if you're going against an army, uh, I'm sorry, a gang that, that, that has armor, uh, say like other enforcers would be a good person, good, good guys to use these against. I just don't know if it's worth it for that 20 credits to be 5% more effective. I'd say two stars. I'd rather just go with the regular bolter. There's no reason to spend 20 more points and make that a 70 point weapon uh, for, a, for a weapon, that, for I guess to make them more effective with the penetrator round. Uh, the man stopper rounds, again, strength four, 10 credits. I'd say three stars. I like the strength four, but on enforcers, the stub gun is with dumb dumb rounds is just better. Photons for the grenade launcher. Photons for grenade launcher, 15 credits. That's a steal. That's what they cost as a grenade anyways. So buy those up. I love photons. I love smoke. The stem slug stash. That would be good if you had, say, subjugators or you had like a leader because they have that better weapon skill. If you wanted to have them, I guess I'm torn on this one. I'd give this two stars. It's too expensive for one round. It only lasts a round. Yeah, it's great. It, bu it makes you stronger and, you know, hit harder and everything. But, man, I don't know if I'd pay 30 credits for it. So maybe if it was like 15, I probably would. But 30 credits is too much. So two stars for stem slugs. Um, grenades, smoke, photon, yes. Five stars. Done. I love I love all of those. There's no crack grenades on here. Um, at least as that you can buy to just chuck. Um, you can, I guess we haven't talked grenade launcher, but that's a subjugator weapon, but 
the crack grenades are 35 points for the subjugator uh, grenade launcher. That's This is the only weapon that you have to deal with the ambot or something like that. If you want to kill it, you got to get those crack grenades because gonna, you're going to be fighting uphill if you're trying to do anything else with it. And they make it 35 points, so you're going to have to pay, let's see, you're going to have to pay 50 credits for the grenade launcher and then another 35 for crack grenades because it doesn't uh, come with crack grenade standard. It comes with frag and stun. Um, but then also you have to pay another 35 points for crack grenades. That's the only way you're going to be, be able to deal with a brood or something like that. Now, again, let's talk, like go back, pay 60 credits, put that template on the, uh, get or get that template shotgun. Now you can deal with those guys. Um, now, the problem would be if I had my whip aberrant, um, then I may have had the range with the extra three inches from the whips to be able to get into combat with that shotgun guy. But that was the only way I was going to do it. Any other weapons other than a whip, and I would have been pretty, I, I wouldn't have been able to get around his template. So uh, consider that. Um, if you're trying, if you have somebody that's doing this to you and shutting down a character using the using a shotgun template, okay. Last, we'll talk about the hardened armors. It's 20 credits for the regular guys and 30 credits for the subjugators. I would pass on these. I'd give them uh, two stars. Um, they reduce the the AP damage that you get against ranged attacks. If it reduced AP on all attacks, even even uh, uh, weapon skill melee attacks then I would definitely consider it because that's the problem. It, w w the problem with uh, AP is when you run in, the guy's got double cleavers uh, for, a, for a corpse grinder cult guy and he's going to cut you apart. I'll give that two stars. So let's go back. Let's talk subjugator weapons. All right. First is going to be that subjugator pattern grenade launcher, 50 credits. It's got frag and stun. I don't know why. Stun gives you concussion, which does minus two um, to their initiative, uh, which I mean, I... I guess you could try and combo that with a uh, photon grenade, but man, that that's a lot of work to try and steal that away. Because you're think of it this way: you're spending a shoot action, your only shoot action, with one character to knock him down minus two uh, with the first shot. Then you're spending another shoot action with another character to hopefully land that thing and then stun him, or I guess take away his activation with the photon grenade. So you've used two characters to maybe get one character's activation to go away, that's not a good trade-off. Just chuck that one photon grenade and hope for the best. Um, if, if that one guy can take out two or three, then you've done your work. Because one guy stole, you know, one activation took away two activations from the enemy. That's where you get, that's where you make your money. Not spending multiple activations, shooting concussion grenades and then throwing photon grenades and it gets too tedious. And also, by the way, that all has to work out and then, and then hopefully they'll, they fail all, all those rolls. So there's too much luck involved, too much bouncing around grenades involved um, to, to make that work. Uh, so skip that one. We'll call that, we'll call the, the grenade uh, launcher three stars because you need it for that crack grenade later on in the game. So you're probably going to have to pick these up and you're going to have to pay the price for the grenade launcher and then also the crack grenades. And that's, that's, I don't love it, um, but you're probably going to need it late game. Next is going to be the subjugator uh, concussion ram. This is going to be a heavy weapon and it's 70 credits. I don't love that. Um, I mean, heavy weapons are expensive, but the problem is, is this is not a good heavy weapon. It's pretty much a long range bolter. If you, if you want to say that, but with worse damage, it has a 15 inch short range plus one for that, uh, 30 inch long range. Okay. That, so six inches longer than a bolt gun. That's nice. Um, problem is, is what, there's a point where the long range doesn't help, especially in specific maps. I like the sniper rifle, but sometimes it's hard to get over 24 inches to get that plus one for the for the long shot. So 24, but that's 24 inches. 30 inches is 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 you don't get anything for that longer range. Um, it's strength four, just like a bolter. AP minus one, just like a bolter. Damage one. That's where we start to run into problems. So I can buy a bolter for 50 credits and have a better weapon that's only shoots six inches shorter. Um, and the short, the short range is 12 inches on the bolter, 15 on this. So you gain, uh, what three inches on the, on the short range. It gives you a plus one. I don't know if that's worth 20 credits. Um, ammo four, same as the bolter. It has concussion, knockback and seismic, which is m like we talked about earlier, much like the concussion car, uh, carbine. I don't love any of those. The concussion minus two initiative. All right. That's great. Um, Knockback can be good if you're up on structures to knock them off. 
Um, and then seismic, like we talked about, it's going to automatically knock them down if in case they have jump up or whatever the skill is called. That's I, I think jump up is the Blood Bowl name for it. Um, but it allows them to not be pinned. Um, they can just use a free action to stand back up. And then uh, what else? Oh, it's two handed. But that's the other worst thing, bad thing about it. So you have to hold this thing with two hands. And and I guess on the seismic, it, on a six, you ignore armor. Good luck rolling a six on, on one die. No thanks. Um, two stars. I probably one star really. I don't. I don't like this thing. Uh, the SLHG assault ram is the next heavy weapon. Uh, this has a, a range. It's a ranged uh, melee weapon. It has engaged two inches, strength plus two, minus one AP, two damage. Now we're talking um, ninety credits. That's that's expensive, but it's you know th there are heavy weapons that are much more expensive. So in the end, it's not that expensive for a heavy weapon. Knockback, melee, pulverize. I like pulverize on a six. Um, you know, it does does on a six uh, for pulverize, or if you beat their toughness. Uh, so pretty much you roll a d6. If it's equal to or higher than the target's toughness, or if you roll a natural six, they can change an injury die from a flesh wound to a serious wound. That's good. It gives you, uh, I guess... It has the grenades on it, choke grenades and frag grenades. So it has like a little grenade launcher on it as well, which is kind of a weird thing um, for that. Choke grenades are only good if you had chem synth, if you were like an Escher player. Um, frag grenades are decent. They're strength three. Again, I, I like strength three, especially versus other toughness three stuff. You're wounded on a four plus. That's a 50-50. So I'll give it three stars because of that. It's a multifunction weapon. It does melee and shoots 90 credits. That's worth the money. You get the shock baton or the shock stave with the subjugator. Again, go with the shock stave every time. There's no reason to take the shock baton because of the, the minor. It, it has regular strength. It's not strength plus one. And you don't get the range with it, um, which I, we talked about the range tricks you can do. Next, and I think last thing for the subjugators is going to be the Vigilance Pattern Assault Shield. I love this thing. They, they, they look great. 40 credits. It's going to give you... Possibly up to a two plus because of the five plus uh, flak armor. I guess you get. Uh, I guess five plus layer hard layered flak um, give you an undersuit for a four plus, and then the shield gives you a two plus in the arc. Um, or if it's against uh, shooting in the arc, I believe it gives you a one plus. So it's a it's a you either have a two plus or a three plus, which makes you a tank. And the strength is regular, strength is strength, damage is one, has knockback, but this allows you to have dual weapons, so you get that extra attack from it. So if you say have a shock stave and the shield, or even a stub gun and the shield, perfect combo, um, run in there, blast them, or shock stave them, and uh, I love this thing, looks great, cool weapon, 40 credits, great buy, five stars. All right, final section for the show, let's talk about skills. First, we'll go over the Palanite Enforcer skills that you can get that are only available to the Palanite Enforcers. First one, got your six. So you don't lose an activation. You get to, when they declare a charge, you can stop action. And your any of the any of your guys that... Uh, any of your characters that are standing and active, as soon as a visible enemy declares a charge action, and but before it can be carried out, they can interrupt the fighter's activation and perform a shoot basic action. So like we talked about, if they're in cover, that makes it a little tough, but you don't lose your activation for this. That's that's the greatest part. People are like, oh, it's just Overwatch. No, it's not. Because in Overwatch, you, you lose your activation to do it. This, you just get a free shot out of nowhere. Um, and yeah, you might have to shoot into cover right before he charges out of it. But hey, I'll take that chance to knock him and pin him. Uh, pinning is winning. He just gave up. He just wasted his whole activation with probably a melee character to declare that charge. And I pinned him behind the behind the uh, terrain. Awesome. I'll take that every time. Especially if I have two or three guys with this on, on there. You know, if, if I can get this on every single champ or the two champs and the leader, I'm definitely going to do it. Um, because when you want this going off as much as possible, or you're going to want the other skill, uh, that's coming up next is we'll talk about the last skill, which is threat response. If an enemy fighter ends their move within six inches of the fighter, uh, I guess of this fighter, and they're performing a charge double action. And, uh, if he, if they're up and active, then, uh, this one, you do have to take away the ready marker. So this one does spend your ready marker. So I like the got your six better because it's free. Um, but this one is good too if you have, say, a melee uh, leader running around, a Palanite captain. Um, 
these guys can do kind of a counter charge, move in and possibly pin that guy with, a, you know, smack him down with their own shock stave and shield. You can immediately make your attack. Your attack comes before theirs. And if they just charge somebody, now you have someone in base contact with them. So you're hitting at plus one. So his three plus is now at two plus to hit. Great. Um, he's going to have multiple attacks. If you give him, say, um, if you're, he's a subjugator and he has a shield and uh, a shock stave, or if he's just a regular enforcer and he has, say, a pistol and a shock stave, something like that. Great, great combo. Um, so I love threat response as well. And again, get this on as many guys as you can so that when, when they make that charge, you got multiple guys activating and rushing in. And every, every dude you do after the first one, you're going to get plus one, plus two, plus three in base to base contact uh, for that for having multiple guys in contact with them. So you're gonna get better and better odds of knocking this guy down, taking him out before he can swing. So this is a great way to deal with those Corpse Grinder Colts, just as the Got Your Six is a great way to deal with the Corpse Grinder Colts. So, and all, like we talked about, if you're using that Shock Stave, you're engaged, but they're not, which means they have to charge during their turn to get into base-based contact with you, which means all of these skills activate when they make that charge, if for say, you, uh, use your shock stave and whiff and don't don't knock them down um, so that's a great combo with both of these skills uh, the other skills are all okay if not not good uh, Helmar's justice allows you when you do a coup de gras uh, you can roll twice on the lasting injury table that's that's just mean is what I'd say it's good but it's just mean that's a way to wreck wreck players teams um, as an ex necromantic player in Blood Bowl, I get it. I, with my werewolf, I wanted to do damage. I wanted to take a character out every turn, and uh, and man, my I, so my werewolves murdered multiple characters and uh, unfortunately ruined guys' seasons. And I, I hated being the bad guy doing that. But that's how that team plays. Um, so I get it. It's a. I wouldn't pick this skill first. This might be my third or fourth pick if you're getting a bunch of skills. Um, if you're just running out of stuff, get this one so that you can make sure that that other guy's just broken leader that he has all skilled up. You can take him down and make sure you put a lasting injury on him. Nonverbal communication uh, is not good. It pretty much allows the character to get a 360 uh, field of view. I really don't know how this is supposed to be used. You pick a character within six, that fighter can immediately make a cool check. And if it's passed, then their vision arc is extended to 360. I don't... I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe on an Overwatch guy or something, so he can see all over the place. I don't know what. I I wouldn't waste a skill on this. There's that zero stars for nonverbal communication. Um, restraint protocols. Rather than perform a coup de gras, you can restrain them as a simple action, and um, it gives you uh, during the wrap up phase. You get to add one to the dice roll to determine if you've captured a player. And these players go off the board, so that's the best part about it. I like that one. Again, I, it wouldn't be my first pick, just like Helmar's Justice. But if you want to, I mean, why not? I'd say three stars for that. I mean, it's melee only. It's only on a coup de grace. Um, so, but it's not horrible. You want to capture guys. That's going to get you credits. Great way to get credits. Great way to build story, I guess. So it's a good story skill. Um... And then last is gonna be teamwork. Pretty much gives you plus one to your group activate, or if you don't have group activate, you can make it one for your group activation. That's that's an okay skill. Uh, maybe on a juve or something, if he, if he starts to get skills, that might not be horrible. Group activations are great when, when you need them. It's kind of those weird skills where you don't need it till you need it. Um, so it could be useful, but there's so many other things I'd rather put on them, such as gotcha six, threat response, etc. So make sure you got those other good ones first. Then maybe consider teamwork once you're, you know, you're getting your fourth, fifth skill. Um, but again, I, I, that doesn't happen every time if you're playing a shorter uh, campaign. So three stars for that one. Uh, other things you can get, the leader can take, uh, the only thing I would take out of the bronze section would be bull charge. Um, and that would be after I get threat response. So threat response and then get bull charge. So for bull charge, when a fighter makes a close combat attack as part of a charge action, which you would get because of threat response, any weapons uh, with the melee trait gain knockback and are resolved at strength one. So all of a sudden your strength four, which again, I've, I've preached it over and over, strength four is better than strength three always because either you're going to have a three plus to hit on a toughness three guy or a 50-50 with a four plus against a toughness four guy, which is going to be the majority of the people you run into are going to be 
mostly strength three, I'm sorry, toughness three, and most, and then a few that are going to be toughness four. So great secondary skill if you already have the threat response. Um, and then for the cunning, uh, the cunning, the, probably the main one you're going to, that would be cool and useful is evade. Um, definitely something I put on some of my Delok guys is that. So what it does is it allows you to uh, beat the Infrasight Sniper because um, the evasion makes it so they don't get... So let's say you have Infrasight. That negates cover. Well, with, with Evade, you make your own cover. You can run out in the middle in, uh, of, of the street and you have a minus one to hit or minus two if it's long range. So think of that, that, that uh, Infrasight Sniper guy. He has long range on you. He has an Infrasight. Well, doesn't matter. You're not in cover. So the Infrasight does no good. He's still at minus two because you're long range. He'll get a plus one because of long range, but then that's negated plus another minus one because it's minus two for if your attacks at long range. So this is an amazing skill when you can get it. You don't run into I Only thing I can think of is Delok that get some of the cunning skills. Um, but Evade is probably the best one. Uh, next would probably be Infiltrate. You might want to stick this on some of those guys that, you know, sneaking up a shotgun or a uh, bolter wielding uh, champion might not be horrible to get them in the back lines of the game, uh, enemy gang and start doing some damage. Uh, great way to get around cover, stuff like that, and, and get that flanker around to the side so you, can, you can't you can always be in cover because you've got uh, side, someone shooting from the side and also from the front. At some point, you're going to be outside of cover and they got you. And then, of course, Overwatch for a sniper. If you want to put that on a champion and give him a sniper rifle with that Infrasight, also a good option. I like it on that. Um, I would take fast shot if if you could get plasma guns. But since you only have the uh, since you only have the sniper rifle with enforcers, then Overwatch is also a good cunning skill to use for that. All right, final skills let's talk about is just shooting skills. Uh, all you guys have the access to this fast shot. This is great for the bolters. I really like this with a bolter, and I I like it with a plasma gun. Uh, allows you to shoot twice because it becomes a simple action instead of a basic action. So you can shoot twice in a turn. Yeah, you don't get to aim, but I'll take shooting twice and get to rolling those rapid fire uh, dice a second time every single time. It also allows you to ignore the unwieldy trait for unwieldy weapons, which is, which is good. I, I guess I don't run into that a whole lot. Uh, next is going to be gunfighter. This is one of my favorites because I love the dual wielding or even three wielding uh, gene stealer cult gunfighters that I use uh, very often. But in this one, I would probably go with fast shot with a bolter instead of the gunfighter. Having that dual wield pistol, dum dum firing uh, stub gun guy, it's just not going to do as much damage as a fast shot bolter. So I, I would go with that personally. But if you like it, if it, it you know, go with what you like. These guys can still do damage. Like I said, statistically, they they still will probably get two dice roll. Like if they get within short range, they're probably going to get two serious injury possible rolls uh, with two different dice. With fast shot, you probably get four. Um, so it's it, fast shot's probably going to give you twice twice the effect, but still a good deal. Still can do some damage with it. Uh, next is going to be hip shooting. I would always go with gunfighter instead of hip shooting just because it allows you to move and then make a, uh, and then attack. Next is going to be hip shooting. I would always usually go with gunfighter personally than instead of hip shooting. This allows you to make a double move and then shoot your weapon. So you can do a move move and then you kind of get a free shoot action after that. I get the under, I get the, the, the thought process and maybe you'd want to tack this on after you get gunfighter. Yeah, that's probably how to handle it. I just stick this on after Gunfighter. Um, that way you can move, move, get into close range. Then you do your Gunfighter pistol shot. Pretty good combo there. But you need both those skills. So you got to work towards it. Start off with a Gunfighter though. Next is going to be Marksman. And this allows you to ignore target priority, which is important. And also don't let people forget about this. That's one of, probably one of the main things people forget about is target priority. That can save your butt. So as a character, or I guess as a player... Make sure you're reminding character, uh, players, hey, you, you can't shoot him. You got this guy that's closer or in, in their line of sight, stuff like that. And also, by the way, they need to be in the line of sight of the character. Uh, how the character is set up matters. And I had to learn this the hard way by playing Infinity because I was so used to playing 40K and all the different games that where facing didn't matter at all. You just slapped down 40 dudes for you know an orc band and it didn't matter which way they were facing. They could shoot in 360, move in 360, didn't matter. You had to, I had to relearn that, okay, every time I set a guy down, check his facing. 
Uh, so A, you got to have facing, and B, you got to make sure that uh, you, he, you have target priority to shoot a guy. So Marksman helps with this. Also, uh, on a natural six, they score a critical hit, and the weapon's damage is doubled. That's great. And that's only dumb, doubled on the first damage if it's a rapid-fire weapon, um, but still amazing say it's a plasma gun man you're doing four damage all of a sudden with one of those shots a precision shot is going to be the next skill or uh, next uh, piece in the shooting skill if the hit roll for a ranged attack made by this fighter is a natural six then the shot uh hits an exposed area and no armor save is made so i don't love this one because you have to roll a natural six no i don't 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 use that don't get precision shot it's only on six that's that's a poor choice get any of these other skills that we're talking about here and then finally, you got trick shot. When a fighter makes a ranged attack, they do not suffer the penalty for being engaged or in partial cover. Uh, if that's who you're shooting at, if they're engaged or in partial cover, you get they don't get any benefit. Or if they're in full cover, then they get minus one, not minus two to your shooting. That's a great one. Again, pile that on as a second or third skill for your shooter that has the bolt gun and stuff like that, or even the sniper, uh, giving him trick shot. Another thing, overwatch and trick shot. So now you don't have to worry that you didn't get an aim um, because it's gonna negate his cover, which is like an aim. Uh, so great thing to pile on with overwatch, great thing to pile on with fast shot. So that's how I'd use those skills. Hopefully this helps guys. I'll have uh, the, the second episode of this out very soon, hopefully in about 24 hours. I apologize, it took about five days to get this, this one out, but I wanted to play a bunch of games and try and learn as much as I could about Enforcers before I threw them out. Let me know if this helps you guys. Please comment uh, and, and hopefully we can get a good discussion going about what you think about these guys. They're, they're not a bad gang. They're, if anything, because of the skills they have, those Palanite skills, I would put them in, an, in a mid to upper tier if you were going to tier the gangs. They're not a horrible gang. They're just short ranged, uh, short to medium ranged, and that's not a bad thing. That, you know, they're, they're not Vansar, um, and they're not Corpse Grinder Colts. So they're not really good shooters, and they're not really good hand-to-hand uh, -hand guys, but most of the gangs are not. If you took the starting six, other than Vansar, most of those guys are kind of middling gangs. They, they do everything in different ranges, good and bad. So that's my thoughts on them. We'll put the second episode out and we can talk more about how I build the gang, um, my gang composition for building um, with subjugators, without subjugators, what, what I think you guys should add on as you kind of progress through the campaign, stuff like that with the next episode. All right, guys, that's what I got tonight. Static out.